Looks like this and even a few surprises. <laughs> Oh, we lost the ball again. Yeah. 
fumble once again. Stafford recovers the fumble. Two. That's two. Center or him? Center and him. Took him about a half yard on the play. Second down and nine. He's, there you go. There you go. Probably Tater. Jones on the carry. Daniel Jones up on Tater. Takes it inside the 15 yard line, along with the 14. He's third down and two. Psycho. Good. Milkshake. Hand off to Jones. Deep tackled by Jeremy Doom. Loss of a yard on the play. He made it, he made it, he made it, he made it. Jones takes it down near the 10 yard line. That's yeah. the Steeler first, first down. down. The margin at about the 11. First and 10. That's the end of the first quarter. We're yeah. overloading strong sides. Yeah. 
Some of that? No. He didn't? I don't 
if he did, they went over the top of him. Kessler and Hunsberger in on the tackle. And Jake's down. All the way back to the 34 yard line. Oh, <laughs> 
Come on, JR, put this deep. He got killed. Saxon kickoff is down by Keelish. Target at the 41. <laughs> guys watch the wide side oh my see you take up a yard on the play time out with six seconds third down and nine yeah why waste one yeah. The wide side, guys. No first down. Hey. Oh. Two on the reverse. Tackle by Cersei. The jacket falls short of the first down. That pass play. Pass play. Yeah! Take it. 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 Fourth down. Seven. Jake. Right there. It's a pass play right here. Oh my. Huntsberger on a pick back. Loss of a yard on the play. Steelers take over on down. No fumbles, guys. Hater. 
Jones on the tackle. Tater man. Loss of a yard on the play. Watch your wide side. Here it is. Yes.
the game. They'll never get it. Walking all the way back to the 24 yard line. Check it down. Spike the ball. They can do that in this? Yeah. <laughs> Down at 13, five seconds left. You know they're going for it. Nobody behind you, Gary. Nobody behind you. <laughs> I might go home. We're going out to celebrate now. You get another way home? You get another way home. Who did you come with? Okay. The Rams are going to pick up the pylons and the side markers. Are they going to have a presentation? What a year. That's the best part. <laughs> All right. Okay. See you later. Thanks for coming. Yes, it was.
partially responsible for the, for the uh, supervision of the place, and secondly, I was out there to watch my upcoming players in the league, and, and I felt like over the course of the year, I got the opportunity to see a lot of kids perform and do what we do. And I spent a lot of time in conversation with different coaches in the league about things on Sundays after their games and what have you, and then during the course of the time, they would stop me and ask me about what we were doing or what I thought about this and, and various things. And you could see when I would come out on Sundays and watch the kids perform that a lot of what I saw on Sunday was a reflection of what you were watching us do on Fridays or Mondays. And that to me is, is vitally important to the success of the program that these kids played in this year. And we were fortunate enough to win our first 12 games this year and had record-setting numbers in just numerous categories. I haven't even figured them all up yet. And every kid sitting down here was in that league at some point in time. And to me, that says a lot about what is in the athletic association when kids play in there and the benefits that you can get out of little league football and that setup itself. The two things I hope you understand that are important to, about the league, and I think one of these is geared towards the parents and the other is geared towards the players. I think one of the things that we as adults sometimes fail to remember is that it's a kid's league for kids to have fun and kids to get better at the game. And sometimes we as adults get involved in that and we forget. You know, there's a bunch of fourth, fifth, and sixth graders that need to have a lot of fun and get a lot of involvement when they leave there. So they should be having fun on Sunday afternoons playing the games. And there are times, I think, when, and I've been guilty myself, I think at times, forget that these are just young kids and we're trying to develop them into to good athletes and, and good people. And sometimes we need to back up and take a look and, and say, are, are we really allowing them to enjoy the league? Or are we not enjoying the league as much as our kids are? And I think if we keep that in mind as parents, our kids are going to have a lot more fun. And the second thing I think is important to understand is the league is a building step to finally get into the high school level. And the kids that get involved in little league football are in that organization and get that exposure to the game itself our heads and tails above other kids that don't play because they get in a structured setting and get on teams. They learn how to work together with players and, and kids that maybe they don't go to school with during the time when they're on that team. They're bonded together as a group. Because once they get to middle school now, it doesn't make any difference what side of town you went to school or what little league team you played on. You all get started to get thrown into a mix and now you all become one and now you have to learn how to work together. I think in the Little League program, that, that is good because you're able to take those kids and learn how to work together regardless of whether they're your friends or, or not. And those benefits, I think, really come back and pay great dividends when I get to be my life. These kids down here, I can remember all of them when they played not the league is as the league football player for the years later. And they were talking about, oh, I was a Ram, or I was a Cole, or I was a Steeler, or whatever. Even then, after the sectional, or excuse me, after the regional game, after they just lost to Ryan College, that was the talk of these high school seniors about the memories that they had of football, and it was back to little league football. I walked off the field with a good feeling knowing that these guys had gotten great experiences from the game itself and that they've taken some positives away from this league as well as my program and I think if those things happen then we're doing some good things with the kids in, in this town okay. in football. And, and I can speak about you know, these kids right here because I've worked with them for a long time. You're talking about some great young men that did some great things and got started when they were really, you know, they had opportunities to do some things and gain some successes, which kids.
carried over. You know, every one of them down here have been involved in offense. Hello, uh, my name is Greg Durham. I play running back and defensive back for the other football team. And uh, first thing I'd like to do tonight is to thank uh, all you kids that came out and supported us this year. You guys were a big help, and uh, I really appreciate that. That's what we have to do too, Coach Ross. And um, the thing I want you to really get from this is, uh, you know, I know you guys all like playing football, or else you would be playing. But uh, I really want you guys to work hard for the next couple of years. And I, I want you to keep playing football. And I, I think if you work hard and you listen to these guys here, you listen to Coach Fry, you know, I know there's a lot of good coaches out there. I think you guys will be really good because I got to come out. I got to see some of you guys play this year. I think I saw every team play at least once. And uh, I saw a lot of good football. I saw a lot of guys getting better. And uh, hopefully one day I can come back and I want you guys playing for a sectional championship or a CIC championship because I know you guys are going to be really good. So I just want you to work hard in football, work hard in everything that you do. And uh, another thing I want to say is, um, you know, I know some of you might not have had the best time this year. You're thinking, I'm a little guy. You know, what am I doing playing football? You know, I was thinking the same thing when I was a fourth grader. I thought that, uh, you know, I, I get killed every practice, every game. I got run over by the big guys. I thought, what am I doing? Why am I playing football? I, and I just stuck with it. And, uh, you know, I got a little bit bigger, a little bit faster every year. And uh, I've never, ever regretted it since because I love to play football. I love to play with these guys. And uh, you got great coaches like this and great parents that can get you to your games and your practices. And, you know, it's all worth it. So you guys just keep working hard and keep playing, and it'll all pay out. So thanks for the time. Hi, my name is Jason Murray, and I play wide receiver and defensive back for the LA Panthers. First of all, like Greg said, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and watching us and supporting us this season. It's been a great help. I think the most important thing Oh, I know all you guys are playing against each other right now, but one day you guys are all going to be out with Panthers and playing with each other. And another important thing is make the grades in class. And if you don't make the grades, then you're not going to be able to play when you get older. So the grades are an important thing. Another important thing is sportsmanship. You have to have good sportsmanship. And if you don't have good sportsmanship, then you're not going to get to play and have a lesson. And another thing is just play hard and practice hard. That's all. Thanks. Appreciate everybody uh, give these young men an opportunity to speak tonight. 
Uh, one thing that I'd like to add to what Coach Fry said, uh, a little bit about uh, skill development. Uh, you look at these uh, four of here tonight, we have a, a total of 10 uh, seniors who played this year. Uh, many of them went to several camps, uh, even at your age. Uh, I can speak for one, uh, I paid for 19 camps through the years. Some of them were quarterback camps, some of them uh, kitchen camps. Uh, you, know, you need to be able to get out and do the extra things if you're really going to be good uh, at this level and have an opportunity to make the play at the collegiate level. Um, and in our case, at home, we had to make the decision to go on summer vacation or go to a football camp. And football camps went out each year. And I had a lot of support in that uh, decision making for the boss lady at home. Uh, but uh, you guys understand how that goes. But uh, as far as coaches go, you cannot take a junior or a senior and all of a sudden make them a, a kicker or a punter or a quarterback or uh, you know, some skill positions that uh, maybe they haven't played as they were young. It all starts when they're you know, fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. It's too late by the time uh, they get to the uh, junior and senior year in high school. So uh, parents have the opportunity. There's a lot of really good camps around the area. Uh, one of the best that uh, a lot of our players have been to through the years over Ball State. It's a commuter camp, uh, what, four, four nights this year you guys went to, and it's over $40, uh, two, two and a half hours in the evenings. There's a lot of really good camps uh, that are out there that uh, will help develop skill. Uh, if any of you have any questions about uh, camps, feel free to ask uh, players, coaches. Uh, we have addresses, names, contacts that we can uh, get to. But uh, if, if you want to be uh, a special team player, if you want to be a, a specialist, something you can really uh, work at. As Greg mentioned, you know, uh, size, weight, uh, and nobody knows how big you're going to be. But uh, you don't have to be 6'5 and uh, 230 pounds to be able to kick a football, uh, punt a football, or you know, throw a football. A lot of good camps out there. It's well worth the money. You can contact us if, uh, if you have any questions. Also, I'd like to, to say that the other coaches and teams did a great job this year. I'd like to say that Sam, Sammy, and Monty, and Monty Jr., and the commissioners did a great job around the way this year.
rest of these kids are all my sixth graders, and I think I've had them all for three years. Um, good group of kids, and I know you did a good job, and you represented the folks good in the All-Star game, and you made all of our, us look good. So uh, we'll start with Aaron Sylvester. Kaylin Mitchell. Tyler Herbert. Josh Meyer. Chris Jackson. And Mr. Dallas. Anthony. Again, I'd like to thank the parents and grandparents that support these kids and us coaches. Uh, we all need a lot of help. I know we all make mistakes sometimes, but you know, we, someone's got to do it. So, thanks, kids, and we'll see y'all next year.
Now, as far as fourth and fifth graders go, I'm not going to break it down like that. They're my future Rams. I'm going to call them up here one at a time. Tanner Brown. <laughs> Charles Idlewine. <laughs> Jared Goble. <laughs> Ricky Payne. Travis Ford. <laughs> Colton Cornwell. That's <laughs> my chatterbox. David Payne. <laughs> he was the first sixth grader. Now we're going into the rest of the sixth graders, and I thought I need to take a second to realize that he is a sixth grader on the All Stars. These guys here, they carry the load. There's quite a few of them. Um, they kind of adopted me right off. For a couple of years, they had seen a different coach, and there's a new coach coming in. That's what they looked at me and said, Hey, coach, what are we going to do? And uh, they really took charge and stepped up, and we couldn't have had any success without them. Will Cole. Zion Brown. John Pine. Zach Hunter. Landon Caldwell. Next three guys, I gotta just take a second. Uh, we're all a team up here, and nobody could do it without themselves. These next three guys, I call them my heart, soul, and mind of the Rams this year. Uh, they refused to let the other kids quit. They picked them up when they were down, and they brought the best they could bring every single play. And they set the example to the rest of the Rams and the future Rams. So I wanna call them up one at a time, just give them a second. Jeremy Doom. This next individual, just a real joy for me. Uh, he's my stepson, but also he's a great football player. I watched him grow from a clumsy fourth grader that really didn't understand what a hole was and why he had to run through it, to a force to be reckoned with on the football field. And I think he proved that in the All-Stars. That kid, every single time, played his heart out on every single play, and he refused to give up. Justin Jackson. <laughs> and here is the unofficial head coach of the team. There were many times uh, in the confusion that this kid was kind of holding together when the coach would say, do this, he'd give you that look. You knew you just said the wrong thing, so you need to back up and rewind. Um, he understands the game of football. He knows how to play it. He knows what it takes to win. I think he's going to have a great career if he'll get the support of his family, coaches, the community, and friends, um, as well as with all these kids. But I'm going to recognize Dan Keeley. That's a 2,000 range.
including the assistant coaches. These fellas put in numerous hours and numerous times with these kids, and uh, my hat's off to each and every one of them. And I think all of you were out and watched the ball games this year. So many ball games were so close that uh, a break here, a break there, uh, could have made a difference in a lot of ball games. We were fortunate enough to uh, get some breaks in our, in our way. And uh, I just think, it, I think all the coaches and uh, our lead officials, it was an outstanding year. One of the better years I've been involved with in my 10, 12 years I've been out. I'd like to bring up uh, what I think is one of the best coaching staffs in the league this year, uh, Paul Jones. John Jackson, Wade Carter, and Bill Keaton. I'd like to give uh, special thanks to three individuals who behind the scenes did an awful lot of work for the Steelers. Uh, Mr. Kessler, Mr. Stafford, and uh, Mr. Searcy. They had a lot, of, a lot of help in our practices and a lot of help in our ball games. My wife, and I love her with all my heart, Terry Worsley. Yeah. And all our Steeler parents. Um, I'm going to give you a stat here that is just unbelievable. We started back in early in August, and uh, I'm a big, big believer in practices. Practices is where it's all at, guys. It's how hard you work, how much effort you put into it. The ball games are won on the practice field. And this year, in eight weeks, in 19 kids, we had a 93% turnout rate at our practice. And I commend our parents for an outstanding job. I'd like to start bringing up the team at this point. And we had a uh, third grader, but I wish I could convince his parents to move to Elwood. Uh, he was our water boy. He practiced for an entire year and did get a plan in the games, Marcus Haynes. Our fourth graders, Brian Simmons, Cody Hurd, Garrett Robinson, Mason Haynes, Nathaniel Taylor Jones, the Taylor Warden player. Our fifth graders, Tony Milkshake Eber, Lee Hedgecraft, Eric Kessler, Cody Summer, Jacob Stafford, Troy Warden quick words about our kids you see standing up here right now. Uh, most teams have a lot of sixth graders and, and I'll bring those up in a minute. Uh, we returned seven to eight kids offensively and eight kids defensively. Uh, they don't look very big up here but I'll tell you they'll get you a ton and they are fast. Uh, at this point I'd like to bring up our sixth graders and uh, this is kind of a tough moment for me. Uh, Mom, I'd like you to stand up. Uh, we've been with these kids three years, and we've been through some tough times with them. But uh, I got a few things worked down here. Mommy and I brought these kids into the league as fourth graders. And uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about each and every one of you, but I think these few things that I will say will speak of this the sixth grade group. In three years, they were 13 and two, two undefeated seasons, and two league championships. I think that says a lot for these six boys. They are Corey Summers, 
Kyle Garvey, Nick Gessler, Ryan Hunter, John Kirby, and the big dog, Jay Archie. Like uh, Coach Hancock and uh, Coach Van Buster, it was their first years as head coaches. It was also my first year. I had a little advantage over those two. I've been in the league for a while. But there's a gentleman standing behind me that uh, made it possible for me to have success in my first year, as well as a great group of boys and a great set of coaches. I'd just like to thank he knows who he is because this is just as much success for him and our parents and our team as it is for myself, Monty Rivers. And this is our 2000 Steelers. Thank you. <laughs> and for our sixth string all-star team, the way it goes, whoever wins the league, the head coach has the option of coaching the sixth string all-star team. And then sixth string all-star team head coach is Mark Worsley. Rogan, Rod Van Buster, 
Brian Hancock. started out this year uh, kind of a ragtag bunch. They come from six different teams, six different offenses, six different defenses. But man, when these kids got it together, they get it together. We started out losing our first two ball games, and I'm going to say we won the last four. Although we got the against Westfield 8-7, to seven, I don't know how you could have dominated a team any more than we dominated Westfield. And we beat them all up and down that field, but we just couldn't put it in the end zone. We had two situations where we uh, had turnovers inside the five yard line. We had a safety that was taken away from us. We had a touchdown called back. Uh, I think they're still smart from when the Panthers got done with them. I know in the last four ball games that we played, I don't believe our defense allowed more than 60 yards in the last four ball games. That's tremendous. We beat uh, Blackford. We beat Elliott. We beat Hamilton Heights. We lost to Eastbrook. And we lost to Wells County at the start of the season, but I'd be sure like to play both those two over again. Because I believe this lean, mean, red machine will kick some butt for you boys. One other thing I got about this group, 
Because I know when coaches coach youth football, the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, you never know what's going to happen. And when you get behind in a ball game, that's a real scary feeling. And when I think it really turned around for these 34 young men, and they are young men, was the third ball game against Blackbird. We go in at halftime and we're behind six to nothing. And I don't know what happened with these guys, whether it was the coaches or what, but we turned it on in that second half and they never looked back. And we come back and beat Blackbird 13 to six. Highly of this group and their mentality. And like I say, I expect big things out of them. This is your 2006 grade Panthers. Struck out. Well, he got a good one there. I know, Scott Todd Mingo. Oh, man. He's had a little well, about every game so far. He's got a good one except for the, that uh, opening day, yeah. Nice cut, buddy. I need a light, but I hate to do it. So you ain't looking to pick up any extra hours, are you? Well, you know what, and I probably will be because they're they're supposed. To, uh, what I was told, they're supposed to have a meeting at work, and that they're thinking about sending some of us rotating us to Indianapolis. And I thought I don't want to rotate her down to Indianapolis to be able to to get all my hours in. Uh, I, uh, so well, if you uh, if you're in rest, I can. Over there so what what sh hours are there? Um, I'm not right. sure. Uh, what hours do you want? Midnight? Um, like or days? Well, I think days is pretty much full. They're full. Yeah, that's how it usually is. Is your batter? Uh, I'll check for you then. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm pretty sure the other ship's third. Miles Davis on deck. How hard is the third shift? Oh, it's a breeze. Is it? It is. It's a breeze. And plus, we've only got 20 residents. Oh, God. Yeah, so he wouldn't be working very hard. Close to me. Come on, Ned. That's all right. Stretch out. 
Hi, Jake. Oh, 